I want to thank Paul, even though he's not here, for this opportunity. And Matt and Rock and Chip and Dave and Peter and NCS, this is, so my brother Nick had brought me last October for the first time. And I was struck. I was struck in here. Just the, not only the heart of the leadership, but the yearning and the authenticity and the vulnerability that happens amongst the brothers here. Like, this is real. This is, this is where it's at. Iron sharpens iron. You know, I haven't been in a group outside of a, a men's group in the walls of a church probably since college until this. And this is incredible. And what's amazing too here is if you show up, God is so faithful. Yes, sir. And God shows up. Yes, sir. And um, so I just, I just want to pray exactly that right now for, for two seconds, if you will pray with me. Lord, I just give you this time, Lord God. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Abba Father. I just... I. I I praise you, Lord. I give you the, all the glory and honor. And I just ask that you would have this time. You would uh, uh, pour out your spirit here. Have your will. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord Jesus. Be all of you here, none of me, and just speak through me. Whatever the, the brothers need to hear today, prepare their hearts and minds to receive it, and you meet them where they're at, Lord God. And I just give this time over to you, and I pray your blessing on my brothers here today, blessings of favor and, and provision in every realm, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, like I said, Paul asked me to share today, and that's just what I'm going to do, um, hopefully quickly. And uh, I'm not here to teach or preach, and if I, you know, sound like that in any way, it's just because these are some of the scriptures uh, and that I'm chewing on and that the Lord is working out through me in my, in my walk as as I'm growing as a disciple in him. You know, he, how many of us know that he, he calls us to be his disciple and to follow him um, and then to go out and make disciples? Um, and, and, and that's what I'm growing in. And it's, it's amazing to hear, Rock, hear your testimony. There's, there's elements in here of that um, because that's, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's in our walk with him. Um, so as Nick pointed out, I'm, I'm married to my dream girl, uh, Maria. We have two kids, a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old, live in East Chester, New York. Uh, and we, Maria and I believe we are called to ministry in film and television. And we have a production company called First Fruits Entertainment. And, um, and it's our, our mission, we believe, to bring transformational content to the mainstream. You know, it's not just the, the, the faith-based. While we are faith-based, there's a kind of a whole sector of that now, and it kind of gets washed over as kind of cheap and chintzy and, and hallmarky. And, and the Lord has downloaded to us a slate of 12 unique, out-of-the-box, transformational projects that we believe we're, we're called to get out there. But we, we also have, um, we also have uh, some fun. And so I want to show you, show you a couple fun things that, that we've done. Reed, get down from there. Reed, that's an unusual boy's name. Is that short for something? No. Toes, leave your sister door alone. Are those family names? No. They're father names. There he is. Where's my babies? Doritos! And then the, there's one more. My brother-in-law's in this one, too. So, um, as, as Nick said, so I'm originally from southern Indiana, right across the river from Louisville, um, raised, cath raised Catholic. Uh, I really think out of just really my mom's religious guilt that she felt like I, I just needed to make my sacraments. But no one in my family had any kind of relationship with the Lord. 
um, didn't know what it was like to walk with a living, loving God. Um, so we grew up very agnostic. Uh, I, with, I remember thinking, well, what if we're, what if our galaxy is just like some big marble next to a bunch of other marbles in the pocket of some ginormous creature? Uh, so I just, I, I grew up, who, who cares? And my, my, father's, my father's parameters were, don't get arrested and don't get her pregnant. So those are kind of my only really two steer guideposts there. Okay, there's some latitude, I think, within that. Um, and, uh, but in there, I did get uh, diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Summer before my sixth grade year, um, I was shipped off to a children's hospital. Uh, I was bedridden for five months, uh, chemotherapy. Um, I had to learn how to crawl and walk all over again. And, you know, being an 11-year-old, scared, away from your family, um, not know what's going on. And, uh, but in hindsight, being able to look back, they, they basically, with chemotherapy, rebooted my immune system, and I came back. And that doesn't happen, <laughs> really like that. Um, but in hindsight, looking back and seeing how the Lord had kind of plucked me out to put me on a different path from what was going on in the world that I was in at that time. And, uh, you know, friends that I'm, I pray for and I'm interacting with, but they, by age 12, they were doing crack cocaine um, and really destroying their lives. And I had kind of gotten plucked out of that. Um, so, but I went back and, and again, nothing, none of the Lord in my life. So parties, sex by 16, drinking, um, and then I had an opportunity to go out to Los Angeles. And I was out there, I was acting on shows like <laughs> uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I'm sitting there on the set of Buffy, and I'm wearing a blue jacket that was my father's jacket. And I brought with me as a, as a keep, you know, t attachment to home. And I'm sitting there backstage, and, I'm, and I go, would my father be proud of the choices I'm making. And I got this idea. I'm like, well, what if each different life choice I made, I'd follow, and a different color jacketed version would split out, and I would follow that. Would this, would this guy stay in L.A. and become the next Brad Pitt but miss out on the love of his life? Or would this guy go back to school and, and um, not have the Hollywood dream? And so I had that idea. So we'll put a pin in that. I go back to school to study architecture in Ball State University in Indiana. And my three roommates and I, we get an opportunity to go to New York for a six-month internship. And so we move out there uh, for the six-month internship. And I'm thinking, man, I'm on top of the world. I got world by the balls right now. I'm in New York, just doing architecture. My best friends are with me. I had a, a beautiful, crazy, but beautiful girlfriend back home and a good family. I'm like, man. I'm on top of the world. And I am so thankful that the Lord revealed himself to me when I thought life couldn't get any better, as opposed to you hear so often, and, and uh, uh, brothers in this room have experienced that sometimes that moment happens when you feel like life couldn't get any lower. But I'm, so I'm in New York thinking life couldn't get any better, but I had a pit in, in me. And it was getting larger by the day of just emptiness. Almost like what you were sharing, Rock. Emptiness. And, and I was like, what, why, why am I feeling this way? And I remember that I, it had just grown and grown. And I just, I, I remember leaving the office and almost aimlessly, barely putting one foot in front of the other. I came up out of the subway on the west side. My apartment's on the east side. And I just, I'm... I'm walking through Central Park to get home, and I end up just stopping on a park bench. And I cry out. I'm like, I'm like I, didn't, I wasn't walking with the Lord, and I go, why do I feel this way? What is wrong with me? And at that moment, my phone rings, and it's one of my roommates, and a little voice in me says, take this call. So I took the call, and it just my roommate asking me to come to dinner. So I go sit with him at dinner, and he tells me across the table, he said, basically explains he's feeling the same thing. 
And he said, our two roommates want to get together tonight and just talk. Kind of almost have what they said a Bible study. And I would, normally any other time I would have been Bible study. I, I'm not me. But that same voice said, go to this. And so it was just us four. We crammed in a little room. And he had a little book. I remember this green book called Touch Points for Men, uh, where you look up a topic like stress or something, and it gives you four or five scriptures about it. And it wasn't necessarily anything that happened in the scripture, but it was what the Spirit did in that room. I mean, here were three guys that I thought, you know, they're my brothers. I, you know, yeah, we're close. By the end of that session, we were crying we were embracing, and I was like, I, this is love. This is brotherly love. This is, well, that, that Sunday, we went, we found our way to Redeemer Church with Tim Keller, and the, I didn't know anything about Tim Keller. I mean, we've talked a lot about him, but who Tim Keller was, a Redeemer Church, and I'm sitting there in church, and you could have just told everybody to go home, because everything this guy on stage was saying, it was just hitting me like a freight truck. And, and again, just talking right to me, gets to the end of it, and he says, there's somebody out there that knows what taking the communion is, and we're going to pass the plate around, but today you've had, for the first time, a revelation of what it really is to accept the Lord. So I want you to pass the plate, and I want you to accept the Lord today. And I remember passing the plate and saying that prayer, and from that moment just bathed in warmth. And I, I don't know why, but I got, I say it, it was like warm butterscotch pudding. I don't, know, I don't know why I got butterscotch. You might get tapioca. I, I, don't, I don't know. But um, from that point on, I, I was different. I was different. I had, been, I had been forgiven. I had been redeemed. I had a, that sense of, of I'm loved. Um, and from that point on, it, things were going to be different. Um, I go back to, we all, all four of us go back to Ball State, four completely different guys now. People are like, what happened to you? No one comes back from New York, Christian. Um, and, <laughs> my, and we got plugged into Campus Crusade for Christ. If anyone has children uh, or kids or getting ready to go, it's an incredible organization. Uh, my three friends felt led to start a Bible study in the architecture school. I felt led to start a Bible study in the theater department. Now, here's a brand new Christian. <laughs> I don't know the Bible, but something in me is saying, get over there in the theater department, which, as if, if you know, you know, theater people are <laughs> stereotypically just nutty and all over the place and, and a little dangerous. Um, but then I ended up changing my minor to... The, uh, production and screenwriting. And one night I'm praying, I'm on my face in bed, and so this is the, this is the big drop. The Lord says to me, you're going to move back to New York. You're not going to pursue architecture. You're going to pursue the arts. I'm going to take you on an incredible journey, and you're going to meet your wife, and your family will come along with you and see me through it, see him through it. So my family that wasn't saved doesn't know the Lord. So he drops that on me. And a couple weeks later, I go home. I'm sitting in the front seat with my dad, my headstrong agnostic dad, and who's paid for several of these years of college <laughs> to study architecture. And I said to him that word. And he turns to me and he says, we're ready. And that was like, you know, that affirmation. And so I moved to New York, took that leap of faith standing on that word, and what do I do? I get a job at an architecture firm because <laughs> 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 I didn't know what else to do. But while I'm there, I'm looking for any and, oppor any and every opportunity for, to do what I believe the Lord had called me to do. And I see a casting notice for a Christian off-off-Broadway show. And I send in my headshot and letter, and I write, and I said, listen, I'm supposed to be out here, so I don't care if you even give me a part. I'll sweep the floors in the theater, whatever you want me to do. Well, I get called for an audition, and I walk into this room. And now, I'll, I'll preface this with, in, 
coming out in New York and being by myself and not knowing anybody, I had given it over to the Lord in that, Lord, I would love a beautiful lady to share this with, but I want you. I want you above all things. And if it, always have me on you. And if that's more important to me, your love is more important to me than, than a partner. And I walk into this audition room, and there in front of me, a table, two producers and a director. And as soon as I see the director, I am struck. I mean, pal electricity. I can't even concentrate. I, I don't remember the lines. I sit down in the chair. I, I, I rumble, or stumble through the audition. And I leave, and my dad calls me, and he said, how'd the audition go? And I said, I don't know. But the director is smoking hot. <laughs> um, well, I, I get a part. And I'm like, Lord, this play, you told me to come out here. This is all about you. I've given you this play. But if you don't change my heart by the end of this show, I'm asking that director out. <laughs> well, the last night of the show, the director happens to ask me to walk and get some props. And we're walking. And the conversation veers to, why are you out here? And I give her that word. I share with her that word that the Lord dropped on me. And she'll tell you, when she heard that word, she got struck. And she knew she was going to be with me. Well, we, we get married. Maria. We have immediate three months later, pregnant, and then on, on deal or no deal a few months later. And we, we tried to start writing, producing. But this is really the, where I've been working and struggling. And kind of what Rock was saying. And if you guys experience this, we are... Uh, we are so entrenched in this mentality and this culture that we, especially as men, have to work and have to control. This illusion of control that where my next meal comes from, the roof over my head, the 401k for my kids, the, the, the um, you know, college tuition, etc. So I dive right into construction and architecture and project management for 18 years. For 18 years, I put that word on the shelf and I am, the Lord, Lord you know, allows you to, <laughs> he allowed me to succeed and I see how he was training me in ways of management and things like that. But along with being in that world came stress and toiling and um, now within there, we did do a short film. We did a short film called King's Heart. You can still see it on Amazon. Um, and when we committed, the testimony around that is when we committed to doing that, the Lord took control. He brought the crew. He brought the cast. He brought the money. He brought the $35,000 cinematic camera for free. And not only did he make that movie, he brought in an international distributor, one of the largest family-friendly distributors, and distributed this movie throughout the world. That was all him. Because we had stepped in sync with what he had called us to do. And when you guys get in sync with what the Lord has called you to do, I want to encourage you that he drives. He drives. When you lay it at his feet, and it's not us toiling, he just says, seek me first, and all these things will be sorted out. He takes the wheel. Well, so we did that, but I right back into construction. And to the point where I had a panic attack. I thought I was having a heart attack. You know, the sacrificing of the days, the family. I thought I was having a heart attack. And my, my brother-in-law had to even drive out to Lehigh Valley Hospital to get my kids because I thought I, I, thought I was done. I was in the hospital, EKG, blah, blah, blah. And when we realized it was just, it was the stress. You know, I had, I had been on my face, my favorite place to pray, and Nick shares this with me, um, favorite place to pray is face down in the shower. Face down, ass up. Um, every day just praying, Lord, just get me through this day. Get me through this day. Get me through these meetings. Get me through this. Me, me, me. You know, and then... And then, and I would say, you know, but tell me, tell me how to jump. Tell me, if, I, if you want me to step out in faith, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Just 
you, you tell me how, where, I'll, I'll do it. But then I would stand up and right back into my day, right back into my emails, right back, not reading the word, not, not spending time with him, not putting him first. Until that panic attack happened, I changed jobs. I think, oh, maybe if I get out of the city, the pace will be different. I'll be able to, um, you know, start to spend more time because we, we were just kicking the can on, on these things that the Lord had been downloading to us. Uh, Till I hit a wall. I literally hit a wall. The Lord just stopped me, and, and I, there I am on my face in the, in the shower again, and I finally quieted myself after that prayer. And I say, and Lord, you, you tell me where to jump. You tell me, I, I'll do it. And he said, I told you. I gave you that word. Nothing has changed. I'm, I'm same God, I'm in control, and this is the word I gave you. You just aren't following it. And I stood up, and I went, yeah, but can you just tell me a little more? Can you just tell me how? And how, do you, how many of you know that, that he doesn't give you the whole plan up front? He just wants you to step out of that boat and walk in faith. So I went and told my wife, I said, babe, I, I think we've got to leave my job, and we're to do this full time. And she looks at me, and she says, finally. <laughs> and, and she was scared. I mean, we have financial obligations. We've got two kids. Um, but that's a point there, too. As I'm, as I'm over here toiling with this stuff and, and out of where the Lord wants me, that was causing her to also be out of what she's to be doing and she not being able to be fulfilled and on her purpose and on her and us as the head of the household we have that I felt that responsibility and that obligation and I I never thought of it that way hey I'm I'm again me 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 and and I'm doing my uh, you know providing for my family and not even thinking about what the Lord has in store for her as part of that shared calling so I just want to encourage you guys too, whoever in if marriage relationship and there's that also, are we lifting up our significant others? Are we lifting them up and, and supporting and, and um, edifying them so that they can be fulfilled and accomplish what they need to do? Um, so then I also called my, my dad back home again. And I said, Dad, I think this, you know, I'm supposed to leave my job. And he says, we're ready. <laughs> the same thing he said. He doesn't even remember saying that. He said that same so I go into my job, <laughs> and I'm ready now to take the second biggest leap of faith that I have on this, on this, standing on this word again, the word that I moved to New York, the word that got me that wife, the word that, that allowed us, him to just drive and make King's heart. I go into my boss's office, and I just tell him everything. <laughs> he probably thought I was a wackadoo. But, um, and then I, I stepped out, and... Um, uh, left my job, that was last May, and, um, you know, and, and when I did that, God said to me, you replaced me. You had replaced me as your, as your leader, as your provider, as your savior, as you had replaced me with your world, your control, you wanting to do all this. Same way you put me first, and then I brought you the, the bride, because you were always going to keep me first. The same with your career. You put me first, the movies will come. Yeah. What I need to do through you in that will only happen if you put me first. Because we're, we're called to not worry, cast our cares and burdens at his feet, uh, and seek him first, and be his disciple. And, and so since then, people have been asking me, how's the movie business going? And I tell them, I'm becoming a disciple. <laughs> I'm putting him first. I, and, I'm, 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 and I'm not perfect, but I'm reading the word. As Rock was saying, I'm reading the word. I'm, I'm, I'm praise and worship. I can't encourage you enough to just praise and worship. There's songs out there right now that just, uh, like those songs that will speak to the time you're going and sing those in your house walking, and men's fellowship, and also just being I, I'm more intentional and purposeful now about my relationships. And you realize your prayers don't, you get out of the me, me, me prayers, and it becomes then about the people around you. 
I was just reading in Mark the other day of, of, you know, in Mark where the four men carry the paralytic and they open the roof and they lower the paralytic down so he can get healed from the Lord. And I felt like, am I still seeking the Lord as the paralytic? Or am I now one of the four men that are going out and bringing people, ripping open that roof and lowering them down? Am I seeking him for that? Because I know he's got me. I know he's got my wife. I know he's got my kids. You know, and that's, and that's, the, that's the faith walk right there that I'm working out to be his disciple. When he called Peter out of his boat and Matt, Matthew out of that tax collector booth, it says they left everything. They left everything. So I just, I don't share this with you to <laughs> say, oh, you've got to quit your job. <laughs> but I'm just sharing this with you as what I'm, what the Lord's working out in me of following him, being a fully committed disciple in him, putting him first and let all of those things, um, let him work out all those things. Uh, and there's, you know, there's several brothers in here that are doing the same, like Nick, you, our partner, but also in the other areas of your life, you are walking in faith, and, and Paul and his, and Dave and Al and, and Eddie um, and others, you know, that walk in faith. And so that's, just want to encourage you that the Lord has you, and um, and for those of you that are, that are finding and feeling kind of what rock in, in that time, I was in that 18 years of just doing it in my own strength and focus. I want to encourage you, put him first. And all those other things are going to fall into place. Amen. So here we are. We're, seek, we're, we're, we're in this faith walk, make, wanting, seeking to make movies, those movies that, we, that have been on our hearts that we believe are just, it's transformational content in a mainstream. And that, so bringing it full circle, that, that's our first movie that we're doing. So that story I told you about being on the set of Buffy in that blue jacket, would my father be proud of the choices I'm making? Well, obviously that took on a whole new meaning once I met my heavenly father. You know, would my heavenly father be, am I going to him with my choices? So our first movie is Blue Jacket. We wrote a script, it's about a boy and a girl, and we follow them in one day, and as they make choices, different color jacketed versions of themselves split, and we follow in real time as they crisscross, and you see how their choices impact and create a ripple of those around them. And ultimately, all their paths converge at a house party, and they find that you find the different versions in completely different positions based on the choices they made throughout that day. And it speaks about choices and consequences of those choices and then ultimately grace and redemption and so we wrote the script and it won an award at at a film festival in atlanta and we just launched a uh equity crowdfunding campaign for it um and so if and, and we have a sizzle to to share with you um it's not a it's not that, that equity crowdfunding, it's not a donation. It's if, you, if, if, you are, if you feel led to get involved and invest in faith-based transformational content, um, I just want to encourage you to, to check that out. I have, I have some, some cards here uh, if you want to know more about it um, and become an investor. But uh, we've put a little, little sizzle together for, uh, about Blue Jacket that I'd like to share with you. Um, thank you. And, um, and then our, our next project, I just want to share this. My wife just finished a romantic comedy. It's hilarious. Uh, it's about a, a little girl who grows up on movie sets. Her mom is a stand-in for the, the Julia Roberts of the romantic comedies. And she grows up thinking love is a fairy tale, like from a movie, only to years later be left at the altar. And so now she becomes jaded about love, and she starts a premarital consultancy where she, with nano facial cloning technology, she stands in as the fiance and runs the prospective husband through what she calls the vow verification testers to see, if, <laughs> to see if he's really ready. But she's really just bent on driving him into the ground because she doesn't believe in this thing called love anymore, only to then get unmasked herself and exposed to the, the Lord's love and the, and the plan that the Lord has for her. So uh, that just won an award and got officially selected at the uh, International Christian Film Festival in Orlando. So that's, that's the next project on the heel. So just 
appreciate all your prayers for all of that. But um, again, I just want to, I want to thank you guys. I want to encourage you. He's called you and he's called you to be that disciple and to walk with him and put him first. And that's what I'm working out. And, uh, you know, you have that choice as it talks about. So um, love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.